Hello, I'm not Chuck. In this video, I want to provide some crucial information that you should have in order to pick a lead-acid battery that will meet your needs in your van or RV. Electricity surrounds most of us all day, every day, and we use it without thinking much about it until we don't have it. But many people don't really know very much about electricity, and like a lot of things, if you don't understand it, you sometimes pay too much for it by making bad purchase choices. That certainly can happen when you buy batteries for your van or RV. In the case of electricity, a little knowledge can go a long way toward being sure that you make good buying decisions. You don't have to be an expert, but you certainly don't want to spend more than you need to or buy something that is completely unsuitable for the job you want it to do. And it always helps to avoid getting scammed if you know something about what you're buying. Analogies can help to understand things, and a popular analogy is to compare electricity flowing along a wire to water flowing through a garden hose. It's not a perfect analogy, but it works pretty well as an introduction. Current is very often mentioned when we talk about water or electricity, and in both cases it references a flow. Amperes is often abbreviated as amps and is used to define the amount of electric current that is flowing through a wire or other circuit. Water pressure is pretty easy to understand. Most of us at one time or another have held a water hose and placed our thumb over the end to increase the pressure and spray the water further. Electric pressure isn't as easy to demonstrate, but it works in a very similar way. Certainly, most people know that the higher the voltage is, the more danger there is. Fortunately, the voltage from 12-volt lead-acid batteries isn't dangerous. Fire hoses have more power than garden hoses because they have more water flowing at higher pressure. Electricity has a similar characteristic. Power is a function of volts and amperes. Electrical power is measured in watts and is calculated by multiplying volts times amps. The higher the number of watts, the more powerful the electricity. Now to bring this back to our main topic, which is lead-acid batteries, it's important to know that the type of electricity that flows from a battery is direct current and is abbreviated as DC. The other common type of electrical current flow is called alternating current, and is best known as AC, not to be confused with air conditioning. AC is the type of current that is produced by power stations and sent over wires to most homes and businesses in the Western world. This is where the water analogy breaks down, because water doesn't alternate directions on a garden hose, and it's hard to imagine how AC electricity does, but it really does. Here you see the key words highlighted in red. And if you can remember only what's in red, you will know more about electricity than most of the people you meet on the street. But most importantly, you will know enough to get a grasp on everything else you need to know to set up your van or RV with power for boondocking. How much electric power do you want? It's really kind of a stupid question because you might be thinking, all I can get or all that I need. So the next question might be, well, how much do you really need? How would you answer that? That, too, is not a very good way to ask the question. A much better way to ask is, how many watt-hours of power will you use per day? Can you answer that? Well, if you can, you're ahead of the game, but really you'll probably saying, what's a watt-hour? And that's a really good question. I hope you remember that watts are calculated by multiplying volts times amps. But a lot of the time, watts are already calculated for you. And once you have the watts a device uses, calculating watt hours isn't really hard. Everyone knows that light bulbs are rated in watts, or at least they used to be. And a common size is 60 watts. So if you had one 60-watt bulb that you kept on for a total of 5 hours per day, it would use 300 watt-hours per day. Pretty easy, huh? So let's change the question just a little. 
Suppose you had two bulbs on instead of one. How many watt hours per day would that be? And of course the answer is simply doubling 300 to 600 watt hours per day. So now what you need to do is simply list all the electrical devices you want to use. Calculate the number of watt hours each needs per day and add them all together. Let's look at a few examples. Suppose you had a 19 inch DC television and you plan to watch it on average 8 hours per day. Try that one. Well, that's easy of course, 240 watt hours. What about a portable hair dryer? Well, if it took 30 minutes to dry your hair, that would require 600 watt hours every time you dried it. But if you only washed and dried your hair every other day, the average would be 600 watt hours divided by 2 or 300 watt hours per day. How about LED lights? The process is the same, watts times hours per day times the number of lights. On a side note, if you're still using incandescent bulbs in your van or RV, you should consider changing to LEDs as soon as possible. Occasionally, you'll see a device with its daily power requirement already estimated or calculated. Here, for example, Dometic has estimated the average daily power requirement of this fridge as 0 0.66 KWH. Hmm. And because K stands for kilo and kilo means 1000, 1 kilowatt is 1000 watts. So 0 0.66 kilowatts is 660 watts. So far we've been discussing only devices that run on DC, that's direct current. But you may very well want to run some small AC appliances like a blender. And to do so you will need to have a device called an inverter to change DC from your battery to AC for the blender. And inverters always consume some power in the process so you must take that loss into account. In this case the blender needs 500 watts of AC but the inverter consumes 20 percent of the power while converting it from DC to AC. So 625 watts are drawn from the battery for the 12 minutes per day you are running the blender. It's really no more difficult than DC except it has one more step. Here's a table that summarizes the data for the items we have just discussed. You'll need to create a similar table to calculate your power requirements. Over time you'll learn about how much power is required by the devices you commonly use, but you can usually find the number for each specific device using one of the sources shown on this list. Well, that's probably enough for today. Your head may be spinning, but I assure you that it is easy to calculate your power requirements if you consider one device at a time and just follow the process that I've shown you. Next time we'll look at lead acid battery specifications so you'll be able to understand just what to expect from the batteries you have or the ones you are thinking about buying. In the meantime I would appreciate you liking this video, give me a thumbs up, and watching my other videos. But the most important thing I need today is for you to subscribe to my channel. I need to hit and maintain a thousand subscribers now that YouTube is requiring that for their partner program. Please subscribe. Thanks, and don't forget, I'm not Chuck.